Welcome everyone to Fast Forward to the Future of Interiors. I'm Deb Barrett, and with me is my design partner in crime, Jackie. And we want to thank Ivy so much for um, putting up with us and having us today. <laughs> um, so we're going to go through a fast 50 minutes of um, what we're seeing in the trend forecast for home and interiors. Hi, Jackie. How are you? I'm good now that we're going strong. Thank you, Tara, for uh, working your magic and getting us on online. It's so great to see so many people. I see some really familiar names on the list here and some not so familiar ones and from all over the place. It's wonderful. Awesome. So let's get started. So when Jackie and I are looking at influences and trends, we're always asking ourselves, who are our clients going to be in 2023, right, out in the future? And then what kind of types and services will they want and will they need? Because the phone is definitely going to stop ringing if we're not addressing our market and our ideal client. So we're going to start today talking a bit about those influences in the form of consumer currents and how they're impacting design. And there's a couple of really strong um, mega trends, if you will, that are affecting what's happening in interiors. We know that our clients are wanting to buy better. It's all about provenance and investment, longevity in the products that they're investing in. We also know what everybody's doing when it's about embracing technology and relying on, if you will, um, with sort of a love hate relationship. We are seeing a lot of editing happening pace of life to, um, because of overconnectivity, slowing down and just wanting to get quote unquote back to the basics and taking control of those environments and spaces. And certainly what's happening in the urbanization and city living is all about inspiring whimsical, emotional, or playful, if you will, design. So as we're looking at consumer uh, currents, one of the things that I wanted to sort of frame of reference with you today is um, that when we talk about terms like um, maximalism or pearlization or iridescence or whatever it is, that is nothing more, those style trends are nothing more than visual interpretations of core consumer behaviors and how they buy and uh, use design in their life and in their, in their homes. So it's about recognizing an opportunity through trends to be able to um, get to this consumer. And a couple of things, as I said, there's three top things we want to talk about. And Jackie, I think you can address this because you do this as a product designer. It's about telling a story. Yeah, we, we you know, encourage all the designers that we work with you know, to really get to the core of the story of the product that you're selling to your client. They want to know who made it, where it came from, um, what it's made of, is it sustainable, is it made in the United States? There are all kinds of um, hot buttons for clients these days that really turn them into buyers. And it's not necessarily just how the item looks, um, how it feels, how it sits. It's more about um, the real sort of you know, nuts and bolts of the product and of the manufacturer. It could be the most beautiful product in the world. And if the consumer is not falling in love with the manufacturer and the manufacturer's story, they won't buy, or even the retailer's story. Absolutely. There's so many home furnishing products on the market today that there's really little perception of what quality really means, right? There's not a differentiator. The differentiator is the storytelling. You know, um, if you're, you know, we're often having to tell a customer, what's the difference between a, um, a $300 comforter versus the $89 one, right? Um, so we have right. to tell them the story so they know that they're spending their money in a meaningful way, if you will. Second, it's all about customization and personalization. And guys, this is right up our alley. I can't stress this enough. This is happening in all industries. We're um, a little bit lagging behind, but it's the new gold standard for sure. Um, it's all about, and doesn't customization fit right into it? It's not about options. 
you know, oh, you can get six different arms on this sofa. It's about one off, true custom, crafted pieces. It's about finding and this what your customer wants in one of a kind. Jackie. And it, you know, this comes back to the core of what a designer uh, many times is. Um, I mean, we have a lot of different uh, ways that people do business now, but the, you know, the reason why design became an industry in the first place is our ability to customize, to personalize for our clients um, and to involve them in the process instead of just having them be shopping. And I think one of the, one of the big trends that we're seeing now that goes with this is that people have been burned. They've been burned by buying, you know, less than, less than, you know, good quality product. And now they're looking for quality, looking for customization, looking for something that they can put their own stamp on, which brings us to digital printing. Um, and digital printing and all of the new dye sublimation printing, all the new technology that allows us to customize product um, has become full blown mainstream now where, you know, it had been an outlier for quite a while. Um, it has been embraced by all of the major houses, including great brands like Pierre Frey and, and um, you know, these yeah. sort of stalwart brands that um, poo-pooed it in the very beginning. But once you see what it can do, um, it's amazing. Our friends at Design Legacy, um, you know, they've been spearheading this trend for many years and have now brought it circle, introducing designer lines. And you can embrace that yourself and now create your own product easily. Absolutely. Absolutely. The last sort of the current that we want to talk about is, is what we call sleeping beauties or sleep is a new lifestyle. It is all about the sleep revolution. And where we're seeing it kind of coming to um, confluence, if you will, is it's all about health and well, wellness. I was just um, at an event the other day, and I can't tell you how many people had a Fitbit on their hand right? So it's mm -hmm. wellness plus culture, which is now equaling that whole sleep revolution. For example, this is, um, these are exercise classes that are done at the MoMA, right? Museums are in, there's like boutique mindful, um, you know, meditation boutiques popping up in urban areas. Like this is mindful, for example. Um, so it's really about no, you know, bringing us from a wellness to culture into what we, we call the sleep revolution, um, started by um, uh, Arianne, Ariana Huffington because she basically literally collapsed from exhaustion in 2007 and then wrote the book about why we need sleep and what sleep we do. And what this, so sort of was the um, turning point, if you will, of, um, of the sleep revolution. Millennials are driving this. Um, whether it's well and good, you know, um, whether it's in their travel, whatever it might be, the whole thing is that um, we, need, we need sleep for cognitive, for our health, for brain hygiene, all of those good things, which leads us into categories of furnishings. This happens to be Save Your Beds. This is a um, luxury mattress company, but I think about it. Um, think of how the mattress category has exploded in the last 18 months. This is Vice Spring and Missoni, a collaboration for Harrods, where you can get your um, uh, mattress upholstered in um, Missoni fabrics, for example. Uh, you don't get to see it because you don't. You're sleeping on it, but you know, all kinds. <laughs> if of I paid for a Missoni mattress, I would be seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> idea is that the consumer's relationship with sleep is changing so that's changing how they're buying their products and buying their designs and then we have outliers coming into the market like Birkenstock you know for the um, hipster set and that was doing beds and furniture right I mean it's the same as the outliers whether it's Amazon home and it expands into other categories it's not just about linen bed, linen sheets and bedding though that's the hot thing this summer but it's all about custom, you know, personalization with it, with your mattresses, with your beddings, with your pillows, with your technical styles that you're sleeping on, sleep systems like Pandora's, right, um, Jackie? We always love to right. 
check out what she well and we've been for years i mean we have been espousing to designers that they are missing out on this giant category for sales um not only mattresses which you can um now purchase at wholesale as designers from many many different outlets but bedding um, the whole sleep environment, the cocooning philosophy at home, mm -hmm. um, you know, you should be selling this top of bed. Um, we do custom bedding, but we don't sell sheets, you know, and this is one of our mantras, right, Deb? I mean, sell Absolutely. it all. <laughs> and I think what the biggest trend that we're going to see now is kind of a backlash to all of this with the cheap mattresses that are coming out, the bed in the box. It sounds like a great idea, right? You roll it up, you send it out there. But if you've ever slept on one of those, it might not be for you, you know, and even the big mattress uh, companies have gotten into that. So, you know, you can almost now niche yourself in as a sleep specialist, which some of our people have done. Um, and we do see it with our friend Pandora Del Balthazar. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it's, it's pretty, it's an amazing category that's so underserved by designers um, and it's money left on the table, right, right. Deb? Exactly. And and don't overlook the technical textiles like pure P U R. Yes. Some amazing sheeting sheetings. This is bedding gear. This is a whole new cat. He carried created this whole new bedding concept because his his son had allergies and he couldn't sleep well. You know, I mean, um you're we're seeing mattress and furnishings people going to a consumer electronics show and doing things like the Fitbit for the bed, if you will. It monitors your heart rate, your breathing rate, you know, you have sleep apnea, it's telling you how long you sleep. Um, there's these little capsules that do, you know, sort of tonic aromatherapies that you can put by your bed. It's a lifestyle. So, I mean, you know, embrace it, as Jackie said, and start selling it. One idea that- My, my favorite is the uh, snoring monitor now. <laughs> that you can get that monitors your snoring. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> one one thought we have along those lines is take that whole personalization trend, add sleep to it in a mega trend, and what what maybe redefine the idea of the interior trousseau that M Emily Post started with rides in the twenties, right? That whole sort of bespoke service where you're offering a personalized mix of soft furnishing. You know, and they're going to be future heirlooms. And who knows? There's lots of ways to do it. Yeah. So, Deb, your, your uh, audio is cutting out a little bit. Okay. Scoot closer to your, and don't move around so much. <laughs> you know me, I'm expressive Sorry. with my hands. <laughs> I know. Okay. okay, what's next, Dad? What's next? Well, let's talk color first. So, burnt natural tones, ochres, reds, oranges, burnished colors, early tinted neutrals, all the neutrals have some, um, have some sort of undertone to them. By the way, gray is over and done with. Um, are often just something else. Greenery, because it's a central role, you know, obviously 2017, green was the color and it, it's the whole indoors, outdoors thing. Nocturnal shades are those deep midnight blues, um, tones of black, deep teals, peacocks. Look for uh, brown to be seen. Remember what, what, how many years ago was it, Jackie, when we were doing aqua? Uh, well, I can brown. tell you exactly. It was 15 years ago because that's when I did my whole house. <laughs> it's coming back around. But I and then but these then, sort of Powdery bluer tone. Everything's warming up a bit. All the cool tones, the the you know, grays and stuff like that. Blue. All you have to do is ask Barclay Butera. Blue never went out of style, right, Deb? Absolutely. Blue is classic, in every possible tone, especially like the really the you know, more of a turquoisey hue, a deep, deep blue. Mm -hmm. Green is really important. Green, of course. But on a bluer yeah. note, it's all about the grassier green. So there are ranges. You kind of move the top mm -hmm. a little bit. Black and white. I mean, <clears throat> black and white is still absolutely um, huge. And black as as the overall neutral um, with pops of color is. Um, yeah. 
This is a black and white great. piece from Milan. And one thing else that's kind of off track here, but I want to note is note the carpet and then the piece. So sort of this hyla grip, hyla grip, high, you know what I mean? Text symbols, symbols. Oh, hieroglyphic. Motif, <laughs> hieroglyphic Egyptian motifs coming back into, in, into the home front. Matte blacks, whether it's on walls, whether it's in a bath and kitchen fixtures, whether it's in closets, black against white here is also important. Um, black and golds. Uh, and what we're seeing is in some cases, black upsurging gold um, as sort of ha having a moment over the metallics. But metallics are still going to be well, and, and, and black, black as a matte metallic you know taking out any sort of uh, gold or silver tones right. yeah absolutely browns millennial pink it's here to stay it's not going away the young, gen z's and millennials see it as a as a, a gender neutral color see it as being a bit risky and, and kind of sort of high fashion so it's not going away powdery pink pastels walls this how about this red table with this look at this floor tabletop to floor um chainette fringe gorge gorge um even in buildings this is um in london a new building in king's cross that was all done in pink and um the ubiquitous um gotta have it barn doors um maybe a trend that should die <laughs> Next, let's talk about some of the intertwining trends. And what we, Jackie and I mean by that is we, we're at a lot of trade shows and we see different things and common threads start running through them. So instead of going market by market, we just sort of like we felt that it was important to talk about these three directions because we saw them on every market. And it's certainly about um, enjoying and discovering traditional crafts whether it's an inspiration or what we're calling the perfect imperfection, we recognize it's made. We it's soulful. It's more authentic as a brand. Um, customers think of it that way. So we're seeing artisanal surfaces, unexpected finishes, and loads of you know craft revival. And, and now it's gone from the typical embroidery and and knit and crochet into some really niche techniques that are out there in traditional forms. I have to show you, this is um, the Bloom Cabinet. This was at Milan. Um, so they use straw marquetry, which is a technique um, to create this cabinet. Isn't it amazing? Or embroidery, beautiful. beautiful. All over embroideries, this is Pierre Frey. So look for folk art pieces, ombres, dip dyes, again, blue and white, still popular, as she said, shiboris, you know, embroideries. This is leather, embro or embroidery on leather from studio art by the yard and wall tiles. The second biggest overall trend is this whole new age of old world ornamentation. It's hello to maximalism. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am a more person. Um, so it's about saturated color, lavish materials, vibrant pattern, adventurous forms, eclectic mixes of design influences. Um, it's, it's not about minimalism anymore. Um, we're, we're moving away from it. And, and moving away from mid-century modern um, to this sort of restrained exuberance. Um, as you can see, this on the right, by the way, is um, replacement. Isn't this replacements limited, Jackie? From high point. Yes. yes. And they did these dining tableaus, which again were amazing. I mean, look at that wallpaper. And then, Jackie. Oh, yes. Left Bank Art. This is uh, my collection from Left Bank Art and um, spurred from, you know, a trend that came up basically was the dark floral, which is huge in wallpaper. You'll see it in um, sinks from Sherwin-Williams now. Um, I mean, really kind of every type of surface, a lot of dishware going into dark florals. And then this is my new introduction. Um, 
that he just uh, made his debut in Atlanta market, but this is maximalist as you can get, really. Um, you know, it's my interpretation of old world portraits, um, you know, with a sense of humor. And I mean, is there anything more sexy than a tiger like dressed as like a count or whatever, you know? So um, we're seeing, and especially I am as a product designer, I'm seeing this really come on strong is, you know, this ode to the history of design and the history of painting and art, um, but with a new twist because, you know, let's face it, these skills from a lot of these people are lost arts and they're trying to revive some of this. Um, and you have to give it a little bit of a modern twist. I mean, like that embroidered fabric mm -hmm. from Pierre Frey. It's Absolutely. Amazing. And that, that artistry has been lost for the last few years. To see it coming back is amazing. Yeah. So with that means lots and lots of email. So it's buttons, frogs, pom-poms, embroidery, all kinds of amazing textiles, banding, flanges, soft art, you know, whether it's decorative pillows, whether it's in legs of furniture, whether it's in nail heads, trims, tapes, fringes, all kinds of things. I mean, these are chairs from High Point. Look at the banding. Typical, I mean, basic chair made like, wow, with tape. And every manufacturer, this is Wesley Hall, had some sort of bordered four squared cushion with this very sort of Palm Beach 50s me, um, you know, and then this is uh, Theodore Alexander, I believe. To the point that we saw it in tables. This is a tabletop at Wesley Hall. More century and details and hand on laser cuts. I mean, we couldn't keep track of all of them, right? This is Bernhardt's laser cut yeah. bed, right, Jackie? It's kind of crazy. Very, very Dorothy Draper, very Hollywood Regency. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen that with, um, you know, all the palm leaf papers that have been trending and things like that. Um, but some of the really over the top Hollywood Regency stuff, which of course Deb and I love. Um, and it's just so nice to have those options as designers again. Right, so with that is also this whole growth of velvet and mohair, um, because we think of velvet or mohair as this luxury fabric, but it's kind of quiet and understated. It's definitely gaining momentum. This is a deconstructed um, velvet from Romo, and my most favorite velvet to hit the market. What's the ultimate velvet in luxury, right, Jackie? But silk velvet. Oh. But the issue with silk velvet for designers is that you touch it and it crushes. And so it's not wearable. This is uh, from Fagini Borgi. Uh, Borgi. This is the new silk velvet, and it's done a proprietary process by Pierre Frey, who owns uh, Fagini. And um, it is a silk velvet that does not crush. It's gorge. Plus, look at that color, right? I fell in love. I'm in love already. I know. <laughs> and then you've got Rubelli, you've got um, Fortuny entering into velvets, taking some of their um, typical artisan techniques and not using velvet substrates for it. Again, back to what Jackie was saying about, you know, those techniques that are, are re being reinvented. Um, eclectic styles and global influences is, is kind of going to be around, especially with um, maximalism but it's taking on a different vibe. It's sort of about tribal beats, whether we're talking Africa, South America, Eastern Europe, and even um, um, Southwest. Um, this is Elitis and their whole sort of Terre Savage um, wallpaper and fabric collection from Decalogue. And then Pierre Frey did these two amazing collections um, because he's enamored with American Southwest and sort of doing that Route 66 road trip um, that he did it back in the 60s. So he's done this amazing collection. Love that Chevron silk drapery. Morrison mm -hmm. speaks to it, but in more of a textural look, looks. All right, so then finally, let's look, kind of drill down on some of the markets that we've been at and see how individually they're reflecting some of the trends 
and some of the finer stylings. So our top takeaways of the last three markets have been, it's a much stronger mix of traditional and modern. Gold is a new classic, abstraction, maximalism again, we can't get away from it, animals, florals, and then the new rustics. So the hot most Instagram picture at market in spring was Paris Apartment for Century by Suzanne Kessler. Again, note the pink, but it's a really wonderful mix, very traditional, but look at those tables in front. I mean, it's it kind of set, I mean, it, it's merging of decorative arts periods, whether you're in Century, Tivo, the fabric companies, and a French, it's all about mixing, even Christopher Guy. Yeah, Deb, I think, you know, the key, the key to this um, trend, and, and we've seen eclecticism, you know, over the past few years, but the great thing about it is that people are starting to um, really get one-of-a-kind pieces or good pieces, and they want to keep them forever, and so we're seeing that trend come back to the throwaway decor of the one-stop shop, everything matches, is gone in favor now of collecting again, which is a huge um, spin on what we have seen in the last few years. Absolutely, yep. Um, creating that whole new art and how do you um, create an environment around art um, also as a niche coming up. Gold is now a classic. It's all about the warm metals, um, whether it's in textiles and fabrics like on the, um, the 14 karat gold fabric or the jacquard from Jab, um, whether it's, you know, whatever work, there was multiple showrooms at market having showing gold and warm metal, as Jackie mentioned earlier, in all categories. Note there's that symbolism kind of come popping up again on this 24 karat wall, um, wallpaper from um, four spaces. This is um, co Coquette. And this is Paris Deco off with de Gournay. Um, this is what their new wallpaper that they introduced. Uh, kind of a departure for them, right? And Gorgeous. where we're seeing it moving, so you know for the future, is warm metals are here to stay, but it's moving into more of the rose golds and the coppers. It had a moment about 18 months ago. It's coming back in. Um, particularly because it works really well with the browns and then that that blacks that are out there. So Jackie, um, wall art is product designer extraordinary. Talk a little bit about abstraction. <laughs> well, I mean, abstraction, um, you know, is an amazing thing because it's to the eye of the beholder, right? Um, and really, when you're just dealing with color and movement and, and you know, subtle pattern, you can create all these wonderful textures. So it's really giant art on your wall, um, but it's, it's, you know, being given movement in the room. Um, these ones that show different minerals and slices and things like that are still really popular. Um, obviously the German silvers are huge. Mm -hmm. Um, with these abstracts, you know, we were seeing them with really, um, especially at Bernhardt, with really traditional patterns, but now um, abstract is, it's kind of coming, it's on the sort of downward spiral, I believe, um, because it's been so popular, mm -hmm. but we're seeing it on everything now. Huge wall murals will be introduced um, uh, in uh, Atlanta market right now at Left Bank Art, and they're all abstract. Right. Um, the painterly okay. effect with, you know, it's such an accessible feeling because everybody feels that they could do this, uh -huh. right? It, it's like their kindergartner uh -huh. can achieve some of this. I've tried it and it's not that easy. Um, it's, uh, you know, I think it has this familiarity that people really love and enjoy. I agree. And um, the color schemes are just amazing. And then more is better. This is Tony Decat from Maitland Smith um, at Spring Market, and I'm a huge Tony Decat fan. Have had a chance to be meet a uh, to Don Ridge. It's amazing. Um, all these pieces were curated by Hutton Wilkinson, um, and they're all inspired. And some are are literal representations of some of Tony Decat's pieces. Um, others are um, inspired by them. Um, House of 
company um, known for their patterns and, and crazy pattern on pattern has entered into a collaboration with Zubair. Now, if you think of Zubair as traditional, House of Hackney is a little bit more irreverent and fashion forward. This is their new collection. Um, it was great. I mean, everybody's all about the collaboration these days, right? And they're taking like strictly Victorian patterns and yep. reinventing right. them, which is what I love to do. And uh, Jim Thompson, you know, <laughs> the whole dread, his whole look, take on it. This is Gert Vutrans. We've um, walked, followed him for several years. Jackie and I saw him in has in show houses in Paris for. And he has a new collection for Jim Thompson. That I mean, I mean, who doesn't love those oranges on that? Grapevine, um, you know, Cartier, Cartier. I mean, oh my gosh, he's got some amazing stuff coming out. And then, and I mean, this is what I like to call modernized classic. I mean, it's it's classic. It's familiar. We all remember it. Um, all those motifs, but they're done in a painterly hand and watercolor motifs that make them current. Right. Um, and so with that. It's all about the accent wall now and in some sort of, you know, big floral or dark walls. And what's happened is the where we were putting color into our accessories in the home. Now the accessories are neutrals and pastels and they're move and um, the walls are taking on the color and the boldness with it. Um, and, you know, we saw florals, we see the foliage, we know where all that's going in pattern. And I mean, it would just took a moment to start putting animals into the picture, right, Jackie? <laughs> I've always been an animal lover. Deb always says, if you put a bird on it, it will sell, unless it's that person that hates yeah, birds. Exactly, right? Or, I mean, or insects. This is lighting from Milan with um, insects on the globing. This is, um, and you know that it's important. This is Dirty's brand new collection, just in showrooms. This is the one on the left is a velvet. The one on the right is a print. You know, there, everybody at Paris Deco Off had some sort of bird, in some sort of iteration. That's Timberus species with their pheasants. Fromenthal, very chinoiserie, but again, put a bird on it. New florals are kind of becoming a bit more flatter, um, a little bit more Bloomsbury, arts and crafts, um, stylistic, if you will. This is Osborne and Little's new collection um, for Designers Guild. And it just feels, and it notices it has that sort of layered barrier um, uh, layout to it that's really interesting also. Dark florals. Again, still popular, as Jackie mentioned. Um, not my fave, but if you're a John Darien fan, um, it just it feels, it doesn't feel fresh to me. What do you think, Jack? Well, because it's not being interpreted. So, I mean, this is, yeah. it's beautiful if that's what you like, but there, he's, you can take classic items and if you're, reapplying them in the same way that they were created, you're not going to have that freshness. It needs some sort of alteration yeah. to it. Other than just color, yeah. I think. That's my This opinion. is Degorny, but notice how it's sort of almost lily pa uh, pad, kind of flatter and more abstract, as is Jean-Paul Gaultier for Stark. Um, and then Construct, Deconstruct, it's about kind of taking things apart, putting them back together. Food is driving that whole idea. A lot of strong colors, a lot of architecturally inspired geometrics, clean lines, patchwork is becoming important. Color blocking is still out there. These are some pieces from ICFF and um, Milan and Maison. And it's not just about indoor outdoor furniture anymore. It's like, I mean, basically they looks like bungee cords, right? Or tape that are all being wrapped onto furniture. Macrame, again, kind of leading the way. Here's some more outdoor knotting, fish netting, you know, that traditional kind of like Greek fish net looks. Architecturally, um, this is fabric from, um, it's called Secret Garden from Ar Arianta Campbell. And it's basically photography that she did in a garden. As you can see on the right, it's like faucet handles and the others are, are um, uh, 
put into repeat. This is Rafe Simons for Calvin Klein from Design Miami. Again, taking classic American patchwork quilts and reinventing them. More geometrics. This is Jim Thompson on the left, Kennison on the right. Paper wallpaper. Primar on the left. These are wood floors. Amazing, right? Look at the patterns in those. And part of this deconstruct construct is a new, um, uh, not a new category, a reinvented category, if you will, in textiles, which is field coupe. Everybody did some sort of eyelash fringe. It's basically a, um, a filler technique, a jacquard technique on textiles done in lots of different ways. Um, Showtime in June was showing all kinds of stuff. This is Raffia Phil Coupe from Rubelli. This is a velvet from um, uh, Ver de Barrel. This is Levelair. That. More inserts. This is Elitis. Which brings us to this whole sort of, you know, new techniques, artisan techniques, which are draw, driving these rut, the new rustics, certainly being led by the whole Huga and Lacoon, you know, posing as Jackie mentioned earlier, that whole like back to cocooning right in the home. This is um, a, a, a La Saco Hessian. See the, see the cat, uh, we used to call them Malmos. I'm showing you how long I've been in this industry on the far right, but they're like casements. Was um, what, uh, Justine Blankley for Selamat and Spring Market, I believe, Jackie? Yeah. A lot of river tans. Elitis. So look for wool bouquets, plaids and tartans done interestingly, you know, cable stitches, fisherman knits. Um, Mammos, um, casement on the left, four spaces. Um, by the way, that's a uh, Travera, so it's fiber hardened. It feels like cotton. It's a brand new yarn that's on the market. It's gorgeous. It drapes. And it feels like cotton, yet it's flame retardant, which is pretty awesome. Wools, knits, macrames, and then even to furnishings. This is um, Bernhardt knitted bed. Yep. yep. Took the same motif and did it in a, in a um, was that lacquered? I can't remember that chest. And, and then origami and ribbing as sort of like that whole uh, finishing up then the new neutrals. Yeah, these all speak to sort of that Higgy movement, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Is it Higgy or? Yeah. I can never tell you. I couldn't tell you how to pronounce it. I've seen it pronounced so many different <laughs> ways, right? So last but not least, just to talk a bit about what's coming up. It's really about, you know, while we love technology and it's in our lives to say, we don't always want to feel surrounded by it. So look for the home to be talking about health and wellness, which is going to change how we use our rooms in the home, seamless function, meaning invisible tech and automation and connectivity, looking, asking flexibility in the home, tactility, inter, in integrating all kinds of things, which is going to mean that you're going to have a couple of things hitting you. You're going to have indirect competitors coming into the marketplace, bringing in new products and innovation that um, we need to keep on our radar screens. And then how we're going to yeah, use those yeah. rooms. Yeah. Put your hands down. Can you see me? <laughs> Kurt, yes. But you can also hear this going on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And guys, if I sat my mom. <laughs> we're, we're still having difficulties, people. Can you tell? <laughs> but anyway. Um, on your radar screen should be the whole idea of how the home is going to change and how the rooms were, you know, going to change. You know, you don't need a home office anymore. 
because you can plop down on your couch with your laptop and your smartphone and work. Right? So is that going to become the spa or the wellness? I mean, how are bathrooms going to be used? So um, that kind of gives you a little sneak peek of what we um, have seen happening and where we think it's going. Does anybody have any Q&A or questions? Again, thanks, Jackie, for joining um, me. And thanks to Ivy for um, allowing us to do this. Uh, we are constantly posting things about trends and and uh, that type of thing and about our tours and our products yep. and that type of stuff. Yep. Hey, Tara, there's our, our uh, website. Um, any any questions at all? I don't see any. Um, I think there's some tech questions. The for, questions. There's some tech. Oh wait, we do. We do. Maybe that's me now. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, what do you think are the most important markets to hit per year, Jeb? Oh, um, sir, for me, it's um, the international markets along with High Point. Um, because I'm a firm believer in um, kind of being out there and, and being ahead of the curve versus behind the curve. So certainly Maison et Objet, um, Heim Textile, if you're in, doing textiles in any shape or form, um, High Point's a must, wouldn't you agree, Jackie? Um, and well, if, I mean, for me, I think that it depends on your market. It depends on who your customer is. Um, many of us won't make it to the European markets, and that's why we love having Deb go over there and give us all the, the goods coming back. Um, if you can make it there, it's great. I think um, High Point is the big daddy of markets here in the United States, um, but there are great regional markets as well. Las Vegas market, if you're on the West Coast, um, you have Dallas market, you have Atlanta market, you have, you say, have New York, Miami, um, in Canada, you have Toronto. Um, so it kind of, I think, depends on what you're looking for. But every one of these markets has fantastic websites now. They have a lot of social media. So you can kind of see what each one of them offers before you get there. Yeah. Um, we have another question here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Where's Laura's question? I lost. Um, Laura Newman says, what about spending on good designs? The items you talk about are quite high end. Do you see these quickly moving into lower end items? I would say absolutely. We already see it. I mean, we tend to show the high end items because they're the trend leader. Um, they're the ones that have the money and the, and the ability to invest in the technology to um, produce these new items, like what Deb was talking about, Deb, with the, the velvet and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I, I think that the you know, you know typical trend theory is that you start at the high end and it trickles down. But the field coupe, for example, um, we saw it in um, internationally in market a year ago, and um, everybody U.S. picked up on it at Showtime in June. I mean, mid-range people like um, Greenhouse Design, for example, um, have field coupes in their sample books for the fall. So it's definitely going to move quickly. Um, we have a, a question from Carrie Singleton. Who makes the last mural style watercolor large scale floral wallpaper in your slides? There were tons of them. Um, you know, Left Bank Art does it. You've got Temp Paper has some murals. And then most of those are individuals um, that are creating their own beautiful um, wallpaper murals online. Um, trying to think of what the one gal is that does the florals. It might come to me later. Uh, but I would just Google it and look on Pinterest because a lot of those are posted on Pinterest. Um, um, let's see. Alyssa Cushman is one. And is it Wendy or who's the one that does the, yeah. well, well, we'll think about it. Um, let's see. We have our pottery collections, such as Majolica, Chinsware, et cetera, coming back too. That's a, that's a really interesting question for me um, because we know that millennials are sort of scrapping that stuff um, and they don't want their parents' possessions and they don't know what to do with them. So there's a lot of product like that out available now at swap meets, at in antique stores. And so I really think that it's catching on. What do you think? Dave? I agree. Because of the availability and it's cheap now. 
because not that many people want yep. it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Um, unfortunately, we cannot send out the PowerPoint. Um, Trish Riley asked if we can send it out. Um, number one, it's too big to send, and there's a lot of proprietary information on there. Um, but we do blog and we do, um, you know, if you have certain questions that, you know, you really want answered, please email us and we'll help you out. Um, Deb, this is from Anastasia Harrison. What do you think are the ways that presentations are changing for the future, digital, et cetera? Oh, awesome. I actually am doing a, a blog post and a presentation. I'm working on a presentation on that right now. Um, we're definitely seeing that designers have to put more value, added value, if you will, into their presentations. It's not just about giving them a quote anymore and schlepping in books. It's about creating really, um, whether it's physical mood boards, digital boards, um, rendering sketches if, so they can visualize. There's lots of new ways that designers are um, doing better, pre or doing in more interesting presentations to um, engage the, the client and to make it more of an experience rather than a sales transaction. Great. Um, we have a question from Melissa Har I'm sorry, Haberstro. Can you speak more about digital printing? You, message, you mentioned that this was a way to create specialized product. I happen to be an expert <laughs> in digital printing. I started digital printing in 2009, I think. Maybe, two, well, maybe 2010, I did my first line of uh, digital fabrics. And um, back then it was like the Stone Age. It is amazing what you can do now with a little knowledge in Photoshop. Um, I use a company called um, Shopify for my website. Um, you can check out the type of products I have, which is JackieVonTobel.com. But what I'm able to do is have a completely autonomous collection of my own products through Shopify and a company called Guten, G-O-O-T-E-N, which is their manufacturer and supplier. I offer pillows and I offer art on canvas. Um, I create the art myself and then I send the images, load them into the website and everything is automated. Um, if you don't create yourself, you can use photography, you can use, um, copyright free clip art, um, really any sort of images that you want to create, um, you can make your own product. And it's an amazing opportunity for designers to really create your own signature line. And the wonderful thing about it is that these companies that I work with and companies like them are turnkey. So I never see the product. Um, I, create the product one time, I load it into my computer, and so there's a learning curve, obviously, and um, that product, when an order is placed, is generated to the uh, facilitator, the manufacturer, which is Guten. They produce the product, they send it to the client, I never see the client, I just get a nice little check <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> so that's a whole other topic, and we do do a webinar on that as well. Um, but it's an amazing opportunity for us designers to create some passive income for ourselves. I'm very passionate about that one. Um, let's see. Yes, they do do drop shipping. Um, the digital printing site is Guten, G-O-O-T-E-N, and they are a partner with Shopify. Hold on. Um. Beth is saying that uh, things are popping up in the front, but I've, I've not seen anything popped up in the front. Mm, no, me either. Yeah. Um, and let's see. Um, so here's one. I think the public has embraced gray, white, and beige because they're timeless and easy. What are your suggestions to encourage people to switch to a more trendy style in their interiors? Um, well, I think that, I think customers have embraced color. Um, you know, obviously that depends on who your marketplace is and, and maybe what areas of the country you're in. But if they love color and they're wearing color in their apparel, for example, just a quick uh, 
look-see peek in their wardrobe is going to tell you what colors they can live with in their interiors. And I don't know that I would present it as a trendier color. I would try to integrate all that information as, you know, as part of my recommendations, et cetera. You know, um, sometimes people are just are put off by the idea that this is trendy, quote unquote. And I, I think you're absolutely right, Deb. It's, it's not about trend. If it's about introducing color, um, you know, what we've seen, and especially you, you see all the time now, these just white spaces with white and gray, and they're so cold, and you want to warm that up. I think a great way to do that is to art pil uh, pillows and throws. Mm -hmm. It's a good beginning because it's interchangeable. They get tired of it. They can replace it. Um, you know, that's another thing about the digital revolution. It's made really good art available to everybody at a low price. Mm -hmm. um, and even, you know, really good artists, um, museum quality artists now are doing reproductions of their work. And it's art for the masses. It's no longer just for collectors, um, you know, and that's a great way to bring color into an environment. Mm -hmm. And someone uh, back asked, what realistic? How long do you anticipate um, it'll take for these trends to filter down into the general population? I believe they're already there. You look at uh, some of the things we talked about, the sleep revolution, for example, maximalism, animalia, everything I was showing you, number one is, you know, I mean, it is out there in products, and you're certainly seeing it on HGTV. Um, I just saw what Brian Patrick Flynn is doing for the HGTV uh, 18 house and he's spot on on a couple of things um rh pottery barn amazon uh, west elm um ikea are all um early adopters and drive the marketplace um in some of these trends so i mean they're there and they're i mean um not they're also shopping market we see them all the time at market don't we jackie they, they are there, they're at every market, they're at the international markets, and they are a good indicator. Um, I would say, you know, too, it's a global world now. Social media, all of these trends are driven by consumer behavior, not just in interior design, not just in their homes, by what groceries they're buying, what are their hobbies, what are their travel, um, you know, mm -hmm. habits, and there's a lot of sort of, you know, research going into these trends and that's how they're coming about and because we're so connected now um it's instantaneous really i mean target is a trend leader oh absolutely so when that when that you know table is turned where it's starting with the masses now um there really isn't that much of a of a curve you know now the only other curve is technology um, sometimes has to get to a point where it becomes cost effective for lower price manufacturers to produce some of those to, uh, similar products. Yeah, absolutely. Did we catch everybody's questions? I think so. Any more, anybody? Well, thank you so much. Thank you to the Ivy team. This is always a pleasure. Uh, we hope we get the opportunity to come back and visit with you guys again. Wonderful to uh, hear you all excited about trends. And again, if you have any questions at all, please email us and we will be very happy to answer your questions. And if you're interested in going to market, come with us. Jackie and I are taking a group to Las Vegas at the end of the month, but we'll also be doing our VIP High Point Market Experience uh, October 12th through the 17th. The market starts um, October 13th. We always go in a day early. We get a preview. Yeah, you can see all those trends in person. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which is fun. Thanks. Bye-bye, Thank you so much. Stay cool. Bye. I will.